Every day, British farming is facing new challenges. At AHDB, we're here to help. We invest in your future by delivering work that moves our industry forward. We're here to fund research, share knowledge and grow markets. But it's time for a fresh start and a more open conversation. We need your voice on how we spend your levy. In April 2022, you'll get the chance to help set the direction for AHDB. Register before 31st of March and together we can shape the future of British farming. Good evening, everybody, and um, thank you very much for joining us this evening. My name's Amy Hughes. I'm the Senior Knowledge Exchange Manager for AHDB Beef and Lamb. Um, this evening, our webinar is on pelvic measuring in suckle heifers. Just before we get uh, down to the main event, I just wanted to touch on the video that you've all just watched regarding Shape the Future. Um, in, from the 1st of April, AHDB will be holding a vote on the products and services that we offer you and how we spend your levy. Please, please take the opportunity. You need to register to vote. You don't automatically get one. Um, and you get a vote per sector. So, for instance, if you have beef, sheep and cereals, you get three votes, but you do need to register three times. Registration is really, really quick. Um, 30 second job, just need your, your basic details um, and then a little bit about your enterprise at the bottom. But please do take the opportunity. It's going to be once every five years as this vote. So this really is your chance now for the next five years to tell us how you want us to spend your levy. Um, so please do do that. Right. So this evening we're joined by uh, Dr. Jenny Hull from Black Sheep Farm Health. Um, Jenny's going to be going over pelvic measuring in suckle heifers, um, the what, why and how. Just before we get started, you guys will all stay muted throughout the presentation. Um, and on the right hand side of your screen, you should be able to see a little box that says questions. So we'll come to questions at the end. Um, but if whilst we're going through the presentation, if you think of anything, if you just type them, type them in there and then I will pick them up in the end, at the end. Um, so without further ado, I will pass over to Jenny. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Amy, and uh, thank you everyone for coming tonight. Um, um, so, pelvic measuring in suckler heifers. Um, just a brief overview of what we're going to cover in the next sort of 40, 45 minutes. Um, it's very much sort of why, what is it, uh, how is it done, um, what do we know so far, um, what are the limitations of it uh, and uh, sort of how you you can get your um, vet involved with it uh, and also sort of some breed specifics about it as well. So, so why? So why would we be wanting to know the internal area of the pelvis of uh, suckler heifers? And, and, and this is why that the, the number one cause of, of calving problems, so dystocia, is fetal oversize of big calves. But the number two cause of calving problems is pelvic area. So think about a cork in a bottle that you're, um, you're uh, if your if your neck of your bottle is really small, it doesn't uh, it doesn't matter how um, big that cork is or how small that cork is uh, to get it uh, to get it through the neck of the bottle. Um, so just sort of before we go on to um, pelvic measuring, a um, uh, j just a little plug at EBVs really, and uh, and so if the number one cause of uh, calving issues, uh, uh, calving problems is uh, calves that are too big, something that you can do to affect that is select be uh, uh, bulls so by sires with short gestation lengths and low birth weights, and 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 select bulls. Have a look at figures make use of this all of this data is out there um, for a lot of these pedigree bulls especially the um the anguses the herefords the limmies the simmentals um and uh, and make use of ebvs and uh, uh, and this is a, a prime example of you know there's just just you want to be selecting for everything over at the right hand side that's what you want in you want in a um uh, an, an an easier carving for both the the calves and the daughters and then you want a shorter gestation length so they've got less time to cook them and overcook them and make them too big um and you want a lighter birth weight as well so you want a ball that's that that's over this side 
um, and uh, and this bull. So this bull is is um, uh, his growth rates. His 200 day, 400 day, 600 growth rates are fantastic, but we often have a saying that that dead calves don't grow. So you've got to get them out alive first for them to then grow and hit these uh, these big um, uh, daily live weight gains. Um, so why measure? The, the bottom of this is calving problems cost money, dystocia costs money, and there's so many costs to it. There's, and, and something as simple as farmer time, time spent calving cows, uh, watching cows, calving them, getting them in, um, but also vet fees. If it ends up being um, a, a vet cal led calving or a, a cesarean and, you know, kind of put those figures on 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 a on a, on a cesarean three four hundred quid and then dead calves you know you've kept that cow the whole year you've fed her uh, you've bulled her you've vaccinated her you've wormed her you've fluked her and you've got nothing to show for it at the end in a dead calf and 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 also these big big calves that have had a real nip and a real bad calving um they don't get up and they don't suck and we've got failure of passive transfer and then they've got navel ill and joint ill and and all the other things that go with it uh, and also welfare issues you know it keeps coming up it's 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 something that's going to be uh, it, it, uh, you know in the public domain in terms of the public perception of farming and the welfare of farming but um you know down cows cows that have had a bad um a, a bad calving and a and a nip and have uh tears and pelvic issues and uh, uh and 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 all the problems that go with a bad, bad calving um all of that plays a role as well and failure of cows to get back in calf um, and you know those that have had a, a, a cesarean um, are, or have had a bad tear and a bad calving and have ended up with retained cleansings and, and infection and metritis and everything else and, and failure to get back in calf or get back in calf in quickly as well to hit that um, one calf uh, per cow per year um, and, and reduce milk production as well if she's if she's down and she's sore and she's poorly and she's had a bad calf and a bad pull she's not going to milk as well and she's not going to do a calf as well um, and the main reason for looking at heifers is you want to remove those heifers with narrow pelvises before they go to the bull, before they get served, uh, before they end up in your herd, before you have to you get them vaccinated um, and, uh, and and pull them out and get rid of them and, and, and get them in the fat pen and get them away um, nice and early so they're not hitting over 30 months, they're, they're, they're fat, they're gone, they're away. But also breed out narrow pelvises. I'll come on to it, but the um, pelvic area, pelvic size is very, very inheritable. And so, and what we've been finding on farms now that we've been pelvic measuring for sort of 10, um, 10 12 years, that we actually find less and less small pelvises uh, every year on year. And uh, and I think that is a, a um, a result of, of 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 measuring every year and not keeping those small pelvises and not letting them enter the breeding herd and especially that's probably especially important for um, uh, pedigree breeding as well. Um, and it helps heifer selection. You know, if you've got a big batch of heifers um, to select from and they all look good and you're not sure uh, which ones, it's a good way of pulling out all the ones you don't want. Uh, and it's also important for calving two-year-old heifers as well. You know, they're just that that little bit smaller. They aren't as well grown and and calving two-year-old heifers works and financially it stacks up. But the trick with two-year-old heifers is you've got to get everything right. The, the vaccination status has got to be right. The nutrition has got to be right. You've got to keep them growing on. Um, and pelvises are another thing that, that you don't want these, pel these heifers with little narrow pelvises calving down. Especially, you don't want them at all, but especially not calving down at two-year-old. Um, and also it's potentially an aid if you are using more terminal sires, if you're using your charolais and you're using your blues, you that, that are potentially going to have just naturally um, heavier birth weight breeds. You want to be selecting out those, um, those with small pelvises that aren't going to manage a, um, a charolais or a blue ca a calf as well. And so what is it? Well, we're using this... Um, uh, this uh, little device down here, which is actually called a rice uh, pelvimeter, but that was um, um, designed by a professor rice from America. Um, and we're measuring to get the internal uh, area of the pelvis. So we measure the, the width and the height uh, of the pelvis. We times those two figures together and that gives us the, um, the internal area. 
and so um when we're doing it so we um so there's a bit of a knack to it for for for, for getting it to it but there's a little dip there's a little cave in this this side of this pelvis and we're going for the widest part there and uh and then the height as well it sits needs to sit perfectly on the spine and perfectly on the, what's called the pelvic symphysis that little notch that you uh, um you find on the bottom and and on the bottom of the pelvic uh, pelvimeter here is is uh, some numbers in cent uh, measures in centimeters and you get two figures um, and so this is the uh, just all via the rectum, um, just same as what we'll be doing for PDing and and uh, having a look at the reproductive tracts and everything else. So this would be measuring the height, the, so the top to the bottom, and then this would be the width, so side to side, um, and uh, and you get a measurement. There's a little um, arrow on here. I'm getting a measurement on there. Um, and so we basically have minimum scores for ages and breeds. And this, all of this um, work was done in America and it was done a long time ago, it was done in the eighties. Um, and huge sort of hundreds of thousands of data went in, uh, animals of data went into um, finding these, um, this data. And there's two data sets, one for a native and one for continental. Um, and we know that anything, um, a small pelvic area constitutes anything um, smaller than 140 centimeters at 13 months old. And we also know that the pelvic area grows at a fairly constant rate from nine to 24 months of age. Um, and, uh, and we know that native breeds grow eight centimeters a month um, and the continentals um, grow up 10 centimeters a month. And so from that, we can, um, we can put a little table together for minimums we want to be. So when we are doing it, the one thing we do need is, is an age in months um, and that because that's what we're looking at to get our our minimum area and so we know that anything less than this less than this for these ages is a small area but this is also great because it gives us a really good um uh opportunity you know we've got sort of uh 12 months um in order to get in and, and assess you know have a look at these heifers so these anyone that's um a bull in at 15 months to calve at two we can have you have a look at these uh heifers sort of a couple of months uh a month before bullying and selecting them out so get, give you time to get your vaccines in etc right through to if we are bullying at older uh or sort of buying a batch of of dairy cross heifers in or whatever we've got data there as well to 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 work out and so we know that anything at 13 months uh any if in, in here is is a small uh pelvic area and we also know that it's really heritable. Um, Sixty-one percent is a really sort of something that is very inheritable and does go down family lines. Um, but we also know that a large pelvic area doesn't necessarily mean a bigger, heavier calf. Um, it, it doesn't go that you know you have to be a much bigger calf to have a, a or a much bigger animal to have a, a, a heavier, um, a, a bigger pelvic area. Um, and interestingly, the the so what we tend to find when we're doing to so really you want the overall internal area, but sometimes you can have a, a a big wide pelvis that isn't particularly high high with a low height, but still actually when the times to do together you get a good um, uh, you still get a good uh, pelvic area that's big enough. Um, and because age affects pelvic height, but um, weight influences all components of the pelvic area so uh, in terms of how they grow and how the bone structure grows that the age uh, it, it really affects this um, and so what we do find is if you've got a, a, a small poorly grown heifer she will fail her there is a good chance that she's going to pay, fail her pelvic area if she's if her bones if she's just never grown out she's very small for her age and her bone structure is very small for her age um she's going to end up getting selected out when we're pelvic measuring which isn't the worst thing in the world um and the big thing to note is that you you cannot tell internal internal pelvic pelvic area from the outside there's no uh if she's got big hook bones uh she's got big pin, pin, pin bones or she's really wide it doesn't make any difference to pelvic area internally it, it can you can have a, a little narrow looking cow but actually has a great big pelvis um and uh and that's been sort of that's been looked at and shown a long time ago that um because uh, and they actually looked at so they they measured a lot of cows and men, men measured the the width width from one one pin bone to another pin bone and uh, uh, 
etc and looked at the the width and the height and where the um uh their their femur the top of the femur uh, their their hip um sat and where the top of the spine sat and and there was no correlation at all so you can't tell from the outside it's got to be inside um and just a little note to say about belgian blues that we all know this already but belgian blues have a note noted for a reduced pelvic area and the reason for this is that the um the muscle of that bum end just doesn't allow the pelvis the bones of the pelvis to grow and expand and it's like the it's the weight it's the weight the the, the musculature sort of hammering sort of wearing down and 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 pushing down doesn't allow that pelvis to uh, to to grow and expand and, and bigger and that's just that's just genetics and that's down family lines and um uh, uh, and and we know that with that breed but um uh, there is there is potential for using pelvic measuring within the Belgian blue breed to and British blue sorry of course um, to um, uh, to actually select for bigger pelvises and to select away from these small pelvises that we you know we um, uh, we aren't doing it yet that I know of but it's potentially something that we should be doing and could be doing um, to really make a difference to that to that breed in terms of of their their maternal traits as it were and uh and i'm not aware of people doing much uh with this at all in this country but there is um uh there is a bit of work in america and and uh and some of these big big uh sort of bull what they're called seed lots um so the the um the pedigree breeders that are, are selling bulls and selling uh breeding bulls um that when they get their bull breeding soundness exam done they'll get pelvises measured at the same time and the pelvic measurements are shown alongside their ebvs when people come to buy bulls um, and they know that selecting bulls with bigger pelvises will reduce result in daughters with bigger pelvises they're definitely seeing that and uh, and but like males naturally it's the same in humans now uh, bulls naturally will have a smaller pelvis but we do have minimum figures we do have figures for bulls and where bulls should be sitting um not done massively in this country i think the big role of it in america is when guys have um sort of you know kind of eight to nine hundred bulls to select from and they're going to only sell put for sale sort of two or three hundred and it's another um tool another device another way of, of been able to sort of select um select bulls um but um i don't know of anyone doing this in in the uk on a in a big way or certainly not in beef so what what's our aim so our aim with pelvic measuring is to remove the abnormally small or the abnormally shaped pelvises from the herd so select out the wild cards the real small outliers that's what we're that's what we're, we're we're looking to do we don't want them to enter the breeding herd we don't have, want to have to try and get a calf out through um a heifer with um a really small pelvis um and all the difficulties and the cost that comes with that um it's not an exact science and it does take for your vet you know it does take a bit of um it is a practical skill and it uh and it takes just um it's not something you can do quick you've got to do it nice and and uh and slowly um and uh, and take the time and actually just get their measurements just right um and and definitely the greatest select uh, greatest value in selecting heifers either buying bulling heifers or selecting your own bulling heifers um but um when the americans started looking at this in the 80s they their their, their main goal was to uh its correlation with uh calving problems and they wanted to, to use it to eradicate calving problems to clear it out completely this was it um and what they found was it wasn't a true predictor of calving problems i.e that that uh, heifers with huge pelvises were going to be okay and weren't going to um have calving problems and 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 dystocia and everything else they um uh, because goes back to the first slide first um number one cause of of calving problems is is calf birth weight the number two two is the pelvic area um so um so yeah so it goes back to the cork of the bottle if you're if the neck of your 
bottle is tiny, it doesn't matter how big or small your cork is, it's not going to go through. Um, and the, but the real thing, the real tool, it, it, it's a tool to pull out the small out ralliers, get, get the wild cards um, out, of the, uh, out of the herd. Um, and there's there's a lot of work you can see this is nearly all American um, especially the early stuff um, in the 80s um, it's you know the data has been there for a long time the Americans have been doing it for a long time we're actually just sort of playing catch up now um, and um, um, there's a few but again the, when you look at the papers that were against again these guys were very much wanting it as a tool for calving problems they wanted it as a the the be all and end all the one-stop shop for ending any calving problems that you're going to have and they were very much this isn't the be all that ends all and and sort of went back to the number one cause is birth weights so we're wanting to do them between 12 and 24 months um and select out any more uh, any abnormally pel uh, abnormally small pelvises um and uh the other really good thing to do at the same time is uh weighing heifers as well so when we are having a selection day we're weighing them because at bulling heifers want to be three quarters uh of the adult bulling weight so really sort of if you're aiming for 600 kilo cows you want uh, bull, uh heifers to be 400 to 450 kilos at bulling uh potentially um but we do need an accurate age in months um to work out um uh what's um uh work out what that going back to that table in terms of what the minimum um requirement for her age is um and what I would say is kind of get your money's worth, uh, get your money's worth out of your vet when your vet's there. And there's so much um, sort of other things that can get done at the same time. And, you know, get your vet involved in heifer selection, get your vet involved in that, um, that sort of that bit right at the start of, uh, 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 of that cow's life, that, 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 that uh, suckle cow's working, start of that suckle cow's working life. Um, and so, yeah, pelvic measuring, select out the smaller pelvises, um, but also something that's really important and really makes a difference as well is reproductive tract scoring as well. So actually have a look at um, what's going on. Is she, um, especially young, 15, 13, 14, 15 month old bullying heifers, is she cycling yet? Has she got follicles on her ovaries? As you know, is her uterus just still two tiny little pencils with nothing happening? Or um, have we got, um, uh, she's starting to cycle, she's starting to bull she's ready for bulling and she's got um follicles on her ovaries so you when they go out with the bull in a couple of months she's going to be cycling and actually can get in calf in that that six week bulling period that we want for heifers and also really important is pulling out free martins it'll be it's quite surprising just how many free martins we we do end up finding when we are doing heifer selection and and not and and i say free martins but really i'm including all non-breeders in that um definition and you don't have have to be a twin to a, um, a bull calf to be a free martin or a non-breeder there's lots of other uh, weird and wonderful things that go on uh, in terms of, of chromosomes and XY and YY chromosomes and everything else that can um, that can lead to a non non breeder um, and also you know kind of once she's passed her, her reproductive tract scoring once she's checked you know we'll check at the side of the crush we can we get two figures we times them together have someone there with a calculator and then we have a look at that um, uh, that table and has she passed yes she's passed great um, she can have a vaccine she can have a trace element bolus she can have everything that she needs to um, to get her lined uh, lined up and ready for uh, ready for going to the bull and then other potential disease testing as well you know certain sort of um, you know certain practices certain areas will uh, see a lot of neospora so they potentially can uh, test for neospora at that time and also potentially yonis if you're if you're bullying at two and, and calving at three then potentially uh, yonis testing and make sure you aren't keeping any yonis, yonis positive heifers um, and get them cleared out and in the fat pan straight away so they're just they aren't they aren't there um, making a mess of the herd so so get your money's worth from the vet have a um, 
a big session and uh, and as I say we tend to um, um, I tend to put my hand in check that she's got full working reproductive tract check that she's cycling then measure her pelvis um, and in that time she's maybe already had her bolus because she'll have a bolus whether she's going in the fat pen or she's going in the breeding pen um, get our measurements she's a pass or fail and she, if she's a pass she can have her, her vaccinations ready for going to the bull um, it's a nice, um, it's a nice big uh, proactive uh, uh, day. Uh, and just, I've got a few examples of of ones. Um, uh, so I haven't put the ages in here, but this is a group of twenty uh, Angus heifers. So we're going on the native uh, minimum scores, and these are uh, they were between fourteen and sixteen months anyway. Um, and so the the minimum for fourteen um, months was one hundred and forty centimeters, and the minimum for sixteen months was one hundred fifty six centimeters. And we've got a um, we've got got two that um that failed down here but everyone else has passed and there's a real range like i say the 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 huge pelvises and um i'm not that bothered about you know i wouldn't actively select for really really huge select pelvises i'm just wanting to get rid of those small ones i'm just going to want to get rid of those small ones um that um uh that they're going to cause trouble and then there's a lady down here that she um the, she she basically wouldn't stand still and and we got herself very wound up um in the in the pens and in the stocks and i actually got a vertical measurement for her and i didn't actually get a horizontal measurement for her she was that wound up and bouncing around that much that she got failed uh, based on temperament she had a black mark against her name before we even got her measured so we you know you don't i don't want to be carving that next year with that attitude and, and neither does anybody else um, and here's another one. So this is a um, again another batch. So these are Hereford Angus crosses. Um, we've got uh, we've got some weights in as well. So um, there's uh, there's a, a few here that have actually failed in weight alone. Uh, we've pulled out a, a free Martin. So I haven't even bothered measuring her because she's um, she's got no reproductive tract. Um, we've got a borderline there that uh, this time of day I did actually use the pass. So I now actually fail for borderline one. So so her minimum should have been 140 and she's 141 centimeters so she's right on the right on the cusp and then we've got one really small one here that's 136 centimeters and this one is has been i think her mother has been a a a, a uni so um she's she's not getting kept anyway she's straight into the fat pen um and the the borderlines so this one here i did used to pass until um uh, a, a few years later that uh, a farmer had great delight in telling me that the um the limmy cross uh heifer uh that i was there cesarean in uh doing a cesarean on very late one night was actually a a borderline that i'd passed and that kind of I, that learned me my lesson right there that evening was actually these uh, to actually be harder on these and and pass these um, and don't uh, pass these borderlines actually fail them uh, and be actually harder on these measurements um and uh, and i now do fail these borderlines um because of that 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 one cesarean um another interesting one um so these were this was 73 bought in bulling heifers um they'd been running for though i think they were going into the autumn herd but they'd been running for the summer um and then we'd got them all in to sort through and uh pelvic measure um they were all limousine crosses out the dairy herd and the, although they were a really even nice looking batch there was a real range in ages but that's fine 17 to 25 months we've still got data for that so there's 73 of them um unfortunately this was the point at which we found out that next door neighbors charolais bull had actually been in, in and out over the fences all summer and actually 13 of them were in car so i was unable to measure them so i measured 60 i passed 47 i failed 11 there was two free martins and there was one wild one yeah i think this is about the only time i've ever met a cow that's come into the crush and she's clambered up the front and gone right over the top of the front gate so i never even got her measured she got um she got failed on uh, on attitude alone so um never actually got anywhere near her um but this is the um so this is the interesting thing i've no evidence to back this up but what i'm finding is i think the um the dairymen are selecting for very easy carving especially limousines and i think they're selecting for little narrow 
uh, hips, really narrow hips, and I think that is potentially these these this this selecting for easy carving is potentially narrowing down these uh, uh, pelvises. As I say, I've got no I've got no data, but speaking to other other vets, I think they they're sort of coming across something similar that uh, that that possibly selecting down for these really really easy carving um, um, uh, bulls uh, to get uh, beef breeds out the dairy herd. Um, we are finding more narrow pelvises and what's the answer I, I would probably say you know the answer is that that you don't want to wreck a dairy cow with a with, with a beef bred calf so um you know that is totally the way to go in terms of, of ebvs and easy calving but potentially if we are restocking the beef herd out of um the dairy herd we need to be looking at this and potentially measuring all these um uh dairy crosses and and pulling out them really small pelvises um and so i mean what percentage did i so i i fail on so these so this is what we're finding so we're failing um i failed 15 percent here which is probably about right for for these uh dairy crosses that we're was we're, we're seeing we're definitely seeing more small pelvises uh and pelvic areas um within the these dairy cross breeds but across the board i haven't um uh, I haven't updated my figures recently, but this was from a while ago. I actually sort of added up all of the um, uh, all of the heifers I actually actually looked at a few years ago, um, and um, we've, we've we failed total seven percent just on pelvic area. I think a few more of them would have been free martins and 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 um, uh, attitude and everything else. But, uh, but yeah, passing three ninety three percent and. Uh, um, and uh, and failing 70 percent for small pelvis, and that was that's pretty much on a par with what the Americans were finding. They were looking at between five and um, five and nine percent um, for uh, for for what they were pulling out. So you're not pulling out huge amounts, but if we say it wouldn't it wouldn't happen, but if we say that seven out of a hundred heifers that had a small pelvis that we we kept and then had calving problems she certainly isn't going to leave you any profit if she's had a bad calving and got down or you've had to have the vet out to her or she's needed a cesarean there won't be a lot of um there won't be a lot of profit left in uh, in that calf potentially and that's 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 seven out of a hundred um heifers that you just you just don't you don't want you don't you you, you know you, she could have been away and fat uh, fat uh, never have entered the breeding herd in and out the fat pan and, and giving someone indigestion um, without ever causing you any um, uh, any any problems with a small pelvic area. So about seven percent is where we're sitting. Um, but the only thing I would say with that is we definitely see the farms. The, the more years that we for we keep keeping our own heifer replacements, the more years we um, we do it, the less we pull out each year. That that you know we've maybe gone from pulling out four or five out of a batch to pulling, pulling out one or two maybe um, so I think there is it does fit that you 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 select in a way getting rid of them small pelvic areas you're not keeping them they're not breeding they're not um, leaving heifers in the herd and perpetuating that 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 genet those gen genetics um, so in summary, so the most important first step is reducing uh, calf birth weight. I say you're not, no matter how big, if your calf is absolutely massive, you'll never get a pelvis um, big enough um, for uh, to, to to get it uh, to get a calf through it. Um, so first step is is in terms of calving problems, dystocia, posh words, calving sort of reducing calving problems. The first step is reducing um, the birth weight and looking at your birth weights. But the next step is maintaining pelvic area. So as I say, you're not. Um, uh, we're actively selecting out the small ones. We're not. Um, we're not trying to just keep the really big ones. Um, it's very much that seems to be the, the 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 role of it and the benefit of it and the difference that that you're you're selecting out those small wild cards that that seven percent um, and um, uh, and keeping. Um, 
uh, and keeping uh, keeping away from hopefully calving problems with small pelvises. And something else that, that you find with um, the pelvic measuring is, I don't know if uh, we see it occasionally, if you find that you have a hand in a cow and she has a very huge, very tall pelvic symphysis, so that, um, that lump at the bottom of the pelvis where the, the two sides of the pelvis fuse together is really, really high. What you find is that really narrows down the 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 size you can get a, a a calf through and it really sort of nips at the calf's chest you just don't have enough height to to get the calf out between his chest and his um spine definitely cut any calves that are um you know really deep chested i can think of certain some some sort of um limmies and some bad calving limmies that have a really deep chest and maybe some some big charolais as well and so um the the those ones with the horrible um really high pelvic symphysis are uh, also um you, you you pull them out with the pelvic area because when you measure that height you you tell instantly that there's the, that really reduces the height and and the height of what you're going to get something through in terms of a calf um and that translates to when you're working out that um multiplying the two together and working out that pelvic area you're pulling them out as well and so um we've definitely seen that and um um, perhaps see a lot of that with those um, uh, uh, limmy crosses, Angus crosses out the dairy herd that have them them really small pelvises. They also have that that horrible sort of really high pointy pelvic symphysis, and and uh, uh, and as I say, you, you get uh, you get the two feet and the head there, and then you try and get that chest up and into the pelvis, and it just it just sits there, nothing goes anywhere. Um, but definitely pelvic measuring is most um, most beneficial as part of um, vet involved pre breeding heifer selection use it as um, as, as part of everything else you know don't just use it as um uh, you know make use of your the, the vet that's there and um pull out your free martins um pull out your um you know weigh them as well so pull out all the small ones that aren't going to hit that that um uh that 400 450 kilos for a, for a 600 650 kilo cow adult weight um, pull out all them small ones and then get your uh, trace element boluses in get your vaccines in any blood testing um, that needs to be done as well um, and uh, and also uh, the the reproductive tract scoring as well make sure they are actually um, cycling and you know they've hit puberty and uh and there's follicles on the ovary and, and off the go and that's you know that's a a really um important uh role that the the vet can get involved with and and being right at the start i say i always i did it's, it's it's one of my um the jobs i like because it, it's nice being in right at the start right at the start of that um, breeding cows career in terms of that heifer selection and 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 um, uh, and selecting the best ones and especially if you're if you've got sort of 40 50 heifers and you're only wanting 15 or 20 heifers it's a really good tool to help um, um, select out and pick your pick your best ones really um, and um, and that's um, that's just about me, just about on time. So um, um, uh, we've plenty of time for any questions. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Jenny. Um, yeah, we've got quite a few questions coming in, so just keep putting those into that question box. Just whilst we're waiting for a few, just to let you know that this webinar is part of the AHDB Maternal Matters campaign. So that's a campaign that is highlighting the importance of uh, maternal performance in a profitable suckle herd. So there's loads of information on our website regarding this kind of thing, carrying at two, um, EVVs, maternal EVVs, uh, nutrition, health, management. So if you just Google AHDB Maternal Matters, it'll take you to that page and there's a lot more information on there. Right, let's have a look at some of these questions because there is quite a few. Um, right, first one, how important is the ability of the pelvis to, to expand as pelvic muscles and ligaments stretch during the birth process? So that Ooh, is important. Um... It probably is important. All that sort of slackening, and uh, when you see all the tail head drop and all that slackening, um, uh, it, it, yeah, it, it is really important. Can we? Is there any way we can influence it? Is there any genetic um, uh, effects of that? I don't know. Um, uh, it, um, 
No, they're probably, it, it all probably is important. It's all part of the normal natural birth process. Um, but do we know enough about it? And is there, um, uh, 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 can we do anything about it in terms of selection? Not that I know of. Uh, the only thing would be that if you have a cow that doesn't, um, uh, it doesn't slacken off and doesn't open up, she's going to be a, um, she's going to be problems uh, anyway, and you probably wouldn't keep her another year. Um, and older cows, definitely, I think older cows that, um, you know, sort of AHDB have done all the work to show that cows over 10 year old are less productive. And I think you get cows over 13, 14 year old, I think they're starting with a bit of arthritis. And something that you do find is when they do start and slacken off and all the ligaments and everything start and slacken off coming up to calving, everything, you, you do get them clicking and creaking and everything else. And I think that's all related to those um, uh, ligaments and everything slackening off. So yeah, so very important. Can we do anything about it? Not that I know of. Okay, that's fine. Um, right, there's loads of questions about the actual figures and the measurements. So let me just pick my way through these. Do the measurements show a linear negative correlation to dystocia or is it simply just a way of removing those outliers? So the work that was done in America in the 80s um, couldn't, they wanted to, so the question that they, the hypothesis that they posed was, um, is there, um, can pelvic area be a direct correlate, is there a direct correlation to calving problems? Is it a, um, can it be a direct measure of calving problems? And the answer to that question that was asked was no. Um, there just isn't, there's, there's too many other factors and birth weight, calf birth weight being the biggest factor. Um, so the, 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 the biggest tool, the biggest difference that this makes is, is pulling out those smaller ones. Um, and as I say, you don't necessarily, the, 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 the papers showed that you, a bigger area doesn't, a, a really big pelvic area doesn't necessarily mean really low risk of, of calving problems. Um, it's more pulling out those small outliers. Yeah, and as you mentioned before, it's really, it's really, really important to select your size, isn't it, on those EBVs. So we get asked yeah. questions all the time about the difference between Calvinese direct and Calvinese daughters. And when you're looking at the bull in terms of how easy he's going to calve, it's Calvinese direct, isn't it, that you want to be looking at as well as birth weight yeah. gestation length. Yeah, yeah, okay. getting that, that small calf on the ground. Yeah, absolutely. Real. Um, Right, we'll cover this one because it's a, a fairly easy one. How much does it cost, roughly? He appreciates it will be different for every practice, but what ballpark figure are you able to give us one? Well, um, so we charge everything on time and a, a lot of vet practices uh, will uh, will be the same. You'll have a visit charge and that will be totally dependent on your practice and how near or far you are to the practice. I would probably say... Um, Timings wise, uh, it'll be um, it'll be the equivalent. It'll be take slightly longer than PDing a cow, um, I would say, because you've got to check the reproductive tract to start with, then take um, the two measurements. And then I usually have someone, a scribe at the side, writing down and, uh, and, and using a calculator and getting them. If we need a measurement there and then to whether or not we to pass and fail and vaccinate there and then, then there's usually a scribe sort of doing the paperwork. So yeah. I would probably say all depends on the handling system. So variable. I would probably say two minutes a cow. Um, and it depends how long, how, how good or bad your system is or how quick or slow your system is to putting them through. Um, what we tend to do is um, they tend to be putting a trace element bolus in at the front whilst I'm doing my bits at the back. And the, the, once we get a yes or no for her, we can then vaccinate her before she goes out the front front uh, front gate so uh totally variable uh, as i say if we're if we're basing it on time i would probably say um two to three minutes uh, a heifer okay yeah from what i from who i speak to as well it's it tends to be done on time i think generally doesn't it from uh, from most of the vets i speak to it's fine so yeah like anything it depends how good your handling is right so there's a few questions regarding just go back through these figures with us jenny the different the parameters are different for each breed and there's a different set of figures for each breed is that right uh, so so roughly so the 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 um the work was done 
the basically it was native and continental and the native was largely angus that was the um that was the um the main breed that was going into those those that that native breed figures and the continental was limousines and charolais and there was a lot of charolais data it wasn't um there's also a huge amount i think into the continental went the uh brahmins and the um uh, angus cross brahmins and um the so the all the, the the zebu type cattle um and i can i'm pretty sure they were all raffled up into that um uh, continental uh, breed i um uh uh, I, I, and I, you know, I've never, I've never really sort of looked at them because they aren't really relative, relative um, yeah. sort of important in this in the UK. But it was basically the difference between the native and the continental is simply the um, the, the fact that continental is going to be bigger, so she's going to grow yeah. bigger. She's got to, she's got, and she grows faster. That was what they were working on. This is this is the the original work. This is the holy grail that the, the 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 absolute sort of uh, golden ticket is is 140 centimeters at 13 months um and then we know that that pelvic area grows gradually as she grows in terms of that bone structure grows um and the native breeds um they're saying the the, the continental she's a bigger a, a bigger beast a bigger frame and she's going to grow bigger i think the simple it depends what you um what you're looking for i think if you want to be so when we end up with uh sort of limmy cross anguses will i tend to sort of be really hard on them and say right we're gonna we want them to we're going to be really harsh and we're going to select the continental figures that's what we're going to look for um if um um and it, it and and that that's the ultimate thing to um there i mean there isn't a huge amount of difference um uh between them but if you if you've got some really big cows and, and have a really big adult size then i would say be harsh on them and go for the continental um um figures um so yeah, yeah. so again the simiangus crosses i would um i would tend to be hard on them and go for the continental yeah okay cool thank you so that's okay so that answers abby hopefully that answers your question so abby asked if if the measurement is 140 does that mean that she will have carbon difficulties or is just more likely but that's the cut off that's the, that's the minimum isn't it so hopefully yeah. with the right bull selection if she's got 140 centimeter square pelvis she should be grand fine okay um ryan i think we've answered this next one you said seven percent roughly you were pulling out on average is that right yeah, 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 that, yeah. That, I haven't. Um, it, it's it's a huge amount of work with our computer system to um, to to actually pull out because it's all tends to be just handwritten um, um, uh, tables that are then scanned in. So it's a huge amount of work to um, to sit on and pull that data out. So I haven't actually looked more recently um, uh, and got some bigger figures. But when I put this, um, when I looked at it a few years ago, when we'd probably be I would have been maybe four or five years in, maybe, maybe not that, maybe, maybe, maybe kind of three or four years in. Um, that's what we were looking at. And and it was out of interest what I was passing and what I was failing. That's what I was looking at and and to compare it to what the 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 what's written in the um the the papers, what the Americans have found. And that was I'm, pre I'm pretty sure it was five to nine percent. So um I was sort of um smack on what they were what they were finding as well in terms yeah. of what failing um, and just for pelvic area there'll be a lot more that's going out on um weight and the fact that they're non-breeders or yeah. um uh, uh, uh yeah not been big enough or temperament or whatever yeah okay um just a quick question then about blues because obviously you spoke about the british blues uh well belgian blues historically and, and they're obviously improved well we've been british blue for a long time and i've no doubt they've been they've definitely improved as a breed haven't they what since they've been british blues but there's no individual breed data behind that that was anecdotal you know what we what we know sort of as an industry or is there actually research to say that that blues can sometimes be 
Yeah, yeah, so this guy, so um, this paper by Kolkman in 2009 was, I'm pretty sure it was actually from Belgium, um, hence the, the, the me using the term Belgian blues, but I think we can yeah. totally extrapolate to, to the modern British blue. Um, they, that's what they were looking at. They were looking at, they were going and saying, right, we've got this breed, we've got this terminal sire, it's got really small uh, pelvises, what can we do? What can make a difference? Can we actually... Um, um, uh, what's going on? What's going on with these pelvises, and what can we do about it? And that was that the, the overall the the sort of the the overall theme and the sort of the final result that that paper, after looking at data and looking at what they were doing, um, that was what he said: that pelvic measuring is a potential tool for selection away from small pelvises within the breed, um, and um, uh, and that's what they um, that's what they sort of with their research that's what they've determined. I don't actually know of anything. Um, I, I certainly haven't seen anything like what the Americans are doing in terms of uh, selling bulls with pelvic areas uh, um, sort of written down with, uh, alongside their EBVs, which is what they're doing in, in America with a lot of the, the bulls. I have, certainly haven't seen anything like that um, uh, with sort of British blues, but maybe that's something that's where we should be going for. You know, that's where we should be looking for in terms of, you know, we've got to make, we've got to reduce our costs and we've got to, you know mater maternal matters mat maternal figures are, are what's going to make the difference in terms of making uh, and selecting for um for for maternal uh, figures or what's going to date make the difference in terms of uh, profitability and uh, and 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 perhaps you know taking a look at these terminal sires and um select you know using our tools to select for um easier carving blues uh, and by that you know all of the ebvs all of the birth weight the gestation length the direct carbonese um but also potentially using um, um pelvic area um yeah. to uh to 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 select for uh easier carving more maternal british blues you know I'd, i would i would say it's the answer but i haven't seen anyone doing it anything yet and we know that 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 muscle that that big back end muscle stops that that pelvis growing we know that's within that breed that 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 you know we all we all know that if we're turning up to a blue, um, the, the calf's potentially going to have a big bum end, um, and um, and and she's potentially going to have a little pelvis. Yeah. Okay. James has asked. The slide says sixty-five percent of adult cow weight, but Jenny said seventy-five percent. What was that regarding? Was that mature? Was that uh, bullying weight? Did you have a slide oh, about sorry. bullying weight? Yes, that is a that is me writing. Um, so yeah, no, it's three. Uh, I can't find it now, but three quarters of the adult um, body weight. So yes, seventy-five percent. Sorry, not sixty-five percent. Um, so um, so yes. Yeah, so uh, we're looking at uh, we're we're aiming to probably depends how big. It totally depends on how big your adult cow weight is. I think we're we're aiming for. Uh, I mean, what do the HDB figures now? Is it the the ultimate efficient cow is five hundred and sixty-three kilos or something? Is it? Is that what we're um, uh, we're going on uh, these days, but um, yeah, sorry. So it should be um, at at the point of bullying, she should be uh, three quarters. That's what you're aiming for. You, you so you you um, three quarters of your adult um, body weight. But it totally depends how sort of what breed your cow and how big your cows are. But I would definitely be saying if you can, you're selecting for a smaller cow size because she's she's more efficient and she's cheaper to keep, and she's going to put your ground less the the smaller she is. Um, so yeah, sorry, it should be seventy-five, not sixty-five. Yeah, three quarters of the adult body weight is what you're um, what you're aiming for. So it depends what your um, what your final cow weight that you're aiming for is. Okay, uh, da, 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 da. there's a question here about myostatin, um, which we've just lost. Which you, hang on a second, sorry. Um, yeah, you met, so sorry, back onto blues, but this is a question about limbs as well. Is there a, do you know if there's a similar association with myostatin variants in other breeds, such as the limmy, which are having, which have a, yeah, which have increasingly high prevalence of myostatin variants? So do we, do we know of any research there, Jenny? Oh, God. If not, uh, 
Uh, not my area at all. It, uh, I don't know enough about it, to be honest. Um, there is lots of different, um, I know the ultimate sort of the, the myostatin that you want is the F94L and that's the, the, the little calf that then grows into a really shapey, um, shapey calf and you get that in sort of South Devons and uh, Limes and that sort of thing. Um, I don't, um, I don't know enough about it to, uh, uh, and certainly within all the different breeds definitely have different there's, there's different um, myostatin genes going on and, and whether they're homozygous and heterozygous in terms of, you know, uh, the two sides of the gene uh, carrying, um, carrying that myostatin gene. So it's something that um, a lot of breed societies are looking at. Um, I think if anything, the Angus breed uh, paved the way and they are very, they're very simply looking at myostatin carrier or no carrier. And they, are, I couldn't even tell you which particular genes that they're selecting to no. look in or out it's just simply carrier or no carrier um the limmy are sort of probably play they, they aren't looking at it at the moment uh, or there isn't a lot of data out there at the moment but i think they are looking at it in terms of of um i think is it something like q284 is the is the one that is you know particularly big double muscles problem carving um calves um i don't um i don't know enough about it to to, no, to be able to fine. explain it that's no problem. I'll, Eileen, I'll have a look. I'll uh, I'll speak to um, our animal breeding team and see if I can get any information on that and send it around with the feedback after the after this webinar. Yeah. Um, just the only oh, other thing would be my colleague Kaz Strahashik wrote an article about myostatins in bulls for I think the Farmer's Guardian uh, last yeah. year. So that might be the um, uh, the he, he's sort of more into it than 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 me and understands it's a lot more than me. But yeah, I think it was the Farmer's Guardian article by Kaz um, that uh, that talks about myostatins in bulls. Well, thank you very much. Um, just uh, you were talking about the work done by HDB on the optimum mature cow weight um I couldn't remember the figures off my head and the and <laughs> my colleague has very kindly texted them uh based on financial figures 680 to 685 was the optimum weight and I can also send that study around with the end of the at the yeah. end with the feedback form um yeah. if if pelvic measures if pelvic, me pel if pelvic measurements are displayed in a breeding catalogue is there a good and bad vertical and horizontal measurement? So obviously you would combine them to give you the area, but obviously it's, there must be some mm -hmm. cut off of the actual measurements, is there? So that mm -hmm. you don't get a really flat one and a massively yeah. wide one. Interestingly, no, it, 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 it's very much that the times and the two together, and I, I totally get where um, the question's coming from, uh, because what we found is that you can have a really, you can have quite a, uh, a, 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 a narrow height that uh, and you think oh god we're going to fail this one and then actually she's got a quite a big width and uh, and seems to pass when you they multiply the two together and and get the total area so um so the there isn't not that I know of there's nothing published there's nothing that anyone's going on in terms of, of vertical and, and horizontal it's all about the total area um but like what we said earlier that they um uh on one of the slides what was it that the um uh growth uh so, so uh, there we go. So age affects the height, but weight influences all components of the pelvic area. So, and that's all about how that pelvis um, grows and, and how that heifer grows. And so if you, you know, I don't know if you could, how meaningful a height and a width um, uh, would, would uh, uh, you know, what difference it would make, how, how much, um, but, you know, we don't know enough about that to, um, to um for those figures to make a difference we're looking at both to get the area but what i would say is you do find if you've got one of those um like what i was saying earlier one of those pelvises with a horrible sort of really high uh, uh pubic symphysis that really high notch at the bottom if you get one of them you um 
that that area multiply together just definitely just it, it shifts her she she just she fails so um you do manage to even if she had a really really wide pelvis if she's got one of them big symphysis uh, uh pubic symphysis um uh, them big notches she she just she just sort of fails herself and 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 uh, and she just doesn't pass with the area um yeah i think it's it, the data's there for the total area um and, and has been for a long time and that's what we've sort of been using and that's what we've been yeah. failing them outliers for um i don't know if height and width would would you know there there isn't enough data to give you some minimum um, um uh, figures basically yeah that's fine right i'm just conscious it's eight o'clock we've still got quite a few questions so we might have to send some of these uh replies by email afterwards but just i can answer this one J james we carve at 36 months does this scoring still work for heifers carving at 24 months it's relevant to eight relative to age isn't it jenny that table so it doesn't matter what age you carve in the map no exactly exactly yeah the we've got those minimum figures um and we know that we know that the pelvic uh, area grows at a fairly constant rate from nine to 24 months of age. So that's we've got them figures for those ages. So so long as you're measuring and selecting um, with um, uh, sort of, you know, as long as you're getting at them and measuring them within those um, those ages to use those minimum figures, that that's fine. Cool. Can a pelvis be measured if it's well in calf? Yes. Yeah, so interesting. So the so that was what happened with these ones that they, it's where it's how far on car in calf they are, and uh, and where that uterus is sitting. So these that were a bit of a shock that the, the these thirteen were in calf, they were about three to four months, and that meant that the uterus was just sat right in the pelvis and right in the way. I could not get the calipers, the pelvimeter, um, in to get a width and a depth. Um, you it could, because the uterus was sat there. If they're well on in calf, say six months, seven months, and the um, the uh, uterus has dropped over the pelvic frame and into the bottom of the abdomen, and all you've got is a um, just a big cervix and neck of the uterus running through the pelvis, then you can potentially measure, measure them. Um, so early in calf, no. Late in calf, potentially. Um, you might have slightly missed the boat though in terms of selecting her if she's already in calf um, yeah, and again yeah. the other thing would be I'm always a bit twitchy about rummaging around and poking around something that's um, that's in calf um, but saying that we you know we PD thousands of cows without any issues from very early in calf to very late in calf I suppose but yeah do we want to be bumping her through the stocks late in calf no um, so yeah, yeah three to Mm, two to four months the uterus is in your way later on you can actually measure them but should you be uh, should you be bumping them through the stocks at that age yeah and the calf does the does its most amount of growing in the last stage of gestation is that right when do, when will a calf is asking when yeah. is the calf birth rate determined it's later on isn't it yeah third third trimester is the biggest growth rates yet yeah. yeah okay um Mike Powell has asked, do you think measuring bulls, especially AI bulls, is the fastest way forward to improve pelvic area across the beef herd? Ooh, looking at the American data and looking how inheritable pelvic area is, I think it would be, um, uh, I think it would make a huge difference. But again, we're selecting out those, we've got minimum figures, so the figures for bulls are smaller, the minimum um, figures for bulls are smaller because naturally males have a smaller pelvis. But we have got data there. Um, again, I think the biggest difference will be selecting for uh, selecting out those really small outliers that would be the that is going to be the biggest difference pulling out those fails those really small wild cards um and and using the data that way i think it would potentially make a huge difference um whether we'll potentially find that um these really some of these really super easy carving breeds especially the, the from my experience and other people's experience the limousine in terms of where was these easy carving limies have a really small narrow hips uh, and a real uh, narrow back end and that is selecting down for the um uh, uh, that is making a smaller pelvic area and selecting down for the pelvic area um 
uh, it will there need to be a balance between pelvic area and looking at the other, the other EBVs potentially. Um, the Americans are looking at them alongside, they're looking at EBVs and looking at pelvic areas as well, and and not one of the uh, one or the other looking at both. Um, I think it would be a great um, um, a great tool, and 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 from the Americans we know enough um, to uh, to know that it would work. Um, so I would say yes, that would be a um, uh, a fantastic idea. Uh, but again, you're selecting out them really small ones, and we can only do it when they're uh, as youngsters, okay. uh, that uh, one to two year old. Yeah. Uh, the growth in pelvic area from 13 months onwards that you've told us about. What what daily life weight gain does that assume? Do you know? Uh, I don't. I don't. We just oh, uh, the the data says um, it's a fairly constant rate um, from um, from time nine to twenty four months old. But what I would say is, um, I would say small small poorly well from experience small and poorly grown heifers don't make the grade in terms of pelvic area and that would go without saying that if she isn't um if she isn't hitting um uh, what would ex what we'd expect in terms of a, a good growth rate to, to to get that pelvis grown and get that pelvis bigger in that nine to 24 months of age then she's going to fail on her pelvis anyway um and you don't want to be you know if she's if she's had a bad time if she's had pneumonia if she's had young lung worm or she's you know her mother's been a crap mother that never milked you don't want to be you'll you'll pull her out with these figures because she'll have a small pelvis and you should be pulling her out anyway for um because she's poorly grown and she's not going to make a good keeping um suckle count and 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 again the when we're selecting heifers, we like to select the really big ones because the um, weight, weight at bulling and, and weight at sort of 12 months old, there's so much, um, so much work goes into that, that, that um, body weight. I think that's so important. I think so, you know, in terms of um, potentially she's carved, uh, she's one of the older heifers. So she's one of the older calves. She's carved right at the start of the carving pattern. Her um, mother was a good mother. She didn't have any carving um, issues at birth. She didn't have navel ill. She didn't have joint ill. She got up and sucked it away and her mother's milked really well and looked after her and she's hit some really good um weight and hit a really good daily live weight gain and uh and and her pelvis is big enough and she's passing her pelvic measuring and her, her weight but um I, yeah i haven't any actual daily live weight gain figures i would say that we just know it's a fairly constant rate for that for that um bone structure and that um that pelvis that that bony growth real okay last couple then um before i call it to a close and will any that we haven't answered will will um i'll get you an answer by email um is there any link to bull fertility if the dam has failed her failed the pelvic score is there any link to bull fertility if she's if the dam has failed her pelvic score um not that i know of not that i know of the only thing will be um uh, where has that small pelvis come from you know has it come uh, you know has it come for from her daddy um uh i suppose a lot of a lot a lot of things a lot of um her heritable traits go into that that pelvic score, sport, score i suppose in terms of half from her mother half from the sire and half from the dam um so no not that i not that i know of it's going to be very much what's inherited in terms of the pelvic area and the pelvis yeah okay fine um there's a question from john munn john i'm going to leave your question because i'm taking a guess that you might be a vet and so i will ask that question to jenny outside of here and, and ask her maybe to get in touch with you separately um but da, da, da. if you've had a cow that didn't carve well can you pelvic score her afterwards for next time Yes, certainly. If she's in that with if she's uh, under 24, if she's under 24, 25 months, because we know that the the um, that that growth rate is constant between one to two years after that, she um, you're, you're not going to have um, you haven't got these definite figures. But what you could say is, right, she if she's a, if she's an Angus, for instance, if she's five year old, she's got to be. 
admit she's got to be 236 centimeters we'll say right um and she if she's smaller than that you know she's gonna have a small pelvis or if you know if she's a, a limia or a charolais or something she's got to have a 260 so the only thing is if they get past this 25 months um the figures aren't as as good they aren't as accurate because the 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 growth and the the growth and the uh, it isn't as constant and so we're going a long way from that original sort of minimum 140 centimeters but you could totally measure and see what she is um and uh, and if she isn't hitting sort of where she should have been at 25 months that you know she's got a really small if she's smaller than this and she's an older three four five year old cow then um she's definitely got a small pelvis and she wants to be going but um as i say most um uh, most use in that heifer selection and it doesn't matter whether you're breeding your own heifers but that's the ultimate sort of where we use it but also buying in uh you know bought in bull in heifers we'll often go to a farm where someone's bought heifers from someone else and say right i want them all pelvic measured and checked and check for any free martins before i buy them and we'll go and and, and do that and make sure they've the uh, you know sort of Put, you know fail any small outliers that you don't want to buy um that's the ultimate is is um uh don't end up with bad carvings get rid of them first i think Ho uh, horse door bolted i think is that the, the thing but yeah um yeah, biggest yeah. um biggest value as heifers but yeah can be done as a cow okay right we're going to leave it there thank you very much um i'm just conscious of time and people are starting to drop off so thanks ever so much jenny for that that was really interesting um as i say there are just a couple of questions there but i'll i'll touch base with you with you about those tomorrow if that's okay with you and just get a couple of answers for those people um uh yeah so just a couple one last thing from me please please do register to vote please take the opportunity do not miss the opportunity to tell us what you want us to do with your levy money just google ahdb shape the future it'll take you straight to the right page um and we will be sending an email out after this with a feedback form we'd really appreciate it appreciate any feedback that you've got there'll also be some resources attached to that um and a, and a few points just from jenny's webinar this evening um but uh apart from that i think that's all from me thank you very much to jenny again and have a pleasant evening everybody thank you thanks very much good evening <laughs>